Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, welcome back to the videos, guys, so welcome to another episode of Secret Invasion. I'm gonna dive right into this, but right off the bat, I want to go ahead and mention, they had a character in this who I, okay, forever ago Black Widow came out, Black Widow was a very, like, okay movie, I really was not a big fan of it when it first came out, it's grown on me a lot since then, um, but when I first watched it, there was one character who I really liked and who I thought was really interesting, and I was like, man, I really wish they did more with him, I really wish they would bring him back, I was hoping he'd be in, like, Hawkeye or something, and he is in this! Oh my god, I'm gonna quickly show a TikTok from when I first saw Black Widow and I came home and this was my thoughts for it. No spoilers here, but, um, all these characters and that's the one that steals the show right there. And he showed up! He got Nick Fury yes. in Airplane! That is so cool! I was so excited to see that guy! That was one of the only, like, things in this entire episode that I thought was really, really interesting. I think that, for the most part, this episode was really short, and it didn't have a lot of room to breathe, and I think that it really missed out on a lot of fun opportunities. The first episodes had a lot of great scenes with people talking and having conversations, and they completely decided to throw that out the window and kind of stick with, here, we're gonna have some action. Um, Gravik, who's been kind of, like, slowly coming up with a good plan, very methodical, seemed like somebody who's actually gonna secretly be a genius, um, and now he's just like, nope, he's just a musclehead, and he's just, you know, going to riot and fight everything and kill everybody, and he's gonna become a superhero, and that's all he wants, and it's really weird, because it's like, it, I don't know what the scrolls want anymore, because the scrolls appear, like, as if they wanted a home, and I think that them having new scrollos actually seemed like to be A-OK -okay with all the regular scrolls, but Gravitz was the one who was, like, not satisfied with it, and then I also think it's really weird, Gravitz is somebody who, for the most part, has been, like, oh my god, us scrolls need to be somewhere where we could have our own face, but he's almost always in his human form, which I know is, like, a very small nitpicky thing, but, like, it's weird to me that he's, like, the one who's preaching to the choir that we need our own planet and that we need to destroy Earth so that we can take over Earth, and now he's out here killing his own people, and I'm so confused because I'm, like, I don't know what his goal is anymore because originally it was very obvious that his goal was going to be we're going to try to take over Earth so Earth can be the planet for the scrolls, and now that he has a little bit of power, he's like power hungry, and he just wants to be a superhero himself, and I think he's literally going to just try to completely destroy the world, he went from being like somebody who was a cool religious zealot, somebody who was going to be like a leader of his people or whatever, and was a very interesting villain, to now he seems like he's going to be the Ultron kind, and he just wants to destroy the world, and I don't like where it's headed, I think it very quickly went from Gravitz being a good villain, a good villain, a good villain, a good villain. He kills Talos. This is a really great move. He's, he's getting better and better and better. And then they just like went down immediately. Um, that being said, there were definitely a lot of things I liked about this video. Olivia Coleman was in it a lot more and her character is so much more interesting. And I like the fact that we're learning a lot more about what's going on with her side of the story, because for the most part, we've just kind of been like peeking into what's going on with her. And um, I think that it's really interesting to show that she is now the leader of whatever group she's a part of, um, and there's a bunch of scrolls and stuff, and she's slowly trying to pick them out, and now she's found out about the scroll, um, super scroll machine, and she figured out about it completely on her own, and I think it's really interesting. Um, her character to me seems to be one of the best actual spies in this show so far, and I'm loving literally every time she's on screen. That actress is doing amazing, and I absolutely love it. Um, I think that a lot of the action sequences in this movie are fun. I mean, in this episode are fun. Um, the stuff with Gaia and Priscilla breaking out of that house and killing a bunch of scrolls that were coming to kill them, that was a whole lot of fun. I think that that showed a great job doing, what well, that did a great job showing that they were both very highly experienced spies and they actually know what they're doing because so far with Gaia, it's kind of seemed like she's really bad at being a spy and she's like, earlier in the episodes when she was like, I'm a really good liar, and she was just, like, doing a really bad job of trying to cross Gravix, and we could basically figure out the only reason he's still alive is because Gravix knows that she's being an inside job, and he's waiting for the right moment to kill her, and, um, it's bothering me that, like, a lot of the characters are seeming very inconsistent, now we don't know, like, was she purposely being a bad spy so that she could leave and fake her death? Because that doesn't seem like something she would have been smart enough to figure out, but now she seems like a super genius, and I'm so confused. Um, and uh, something about this episode and the last episode is they've been condensing the episodes and the episodes feel really short. And I don't like it because it's not really giving anything time to breathe because um, we're, we're seeing these cool sequences of like the one with Gaia and Priscilla where they're killing all the scrolls that are coming to kill them. And it immediately cuts away. And now we're like, OK, but now what are they doing in the aftermath of that? Like, I think that we left this episode still not knowing what they were doing because they just ended that fight. And then we switched to seeing Nick Fury and their point of view the rest of the show, basically. And I'm like, 
what is happening. The way that they're setting up this conclusion doesn't seem to be doing a really good job of setting up this conclusion. Um, I think that a lot of the stuff with Nick Fury in it is still great. The fact that they're making his own story is good. But at the same time, at this point, it doesn't it's it's starting to not make sense anymore why he's doing this by himself because it's very obvious that instead of this being like a war and Gravix is starting to start a war it seems like he just wants to kill Nick Fury himself basically and um it seems like it's definitely going to be some kind of physical battle and at this point it's kind of like why are you not calling in the Avengers because I can understand why it could be problematic but at the same time I feel like you need all the help you can get, and the fact that he's about to face Gravix now as a Super Scroll completely by himself doesn't make any sense to me at all, and uh, I don't know. Um, I do think that the final 30 seconds of this was really cool with him suiting up, getting his eye patch back, putting on a new trench coat, and it doing it with the score of the show on in the background. I think that was a whole lot of fun. I think that that was a nice shot, but um, overall, I feel like this episode was really rushed. And something else that really bothers me about it is Talos dying at the end of the episode was a very shocking thing. And part of the reason why I didn't like that it was at the end of the episode, last episode, was because I'm like, we don't get to see the payoff of this. We don't get to see, you know, did he actually die? Stuff like that. So they confirmed that he actually dies in this episode. But we don't have any emotional mourning, really, for this scene. And I really think that it's really depressing because it's like, he dies and then we immediately move on. And I, I kind of wish that for this show... When they did that with Maria Hill, I think that it worked a little bit because Maria Hill wasn't one of the big selling points of this show. Like, yeah, she was going to be on it, but she's not like one of the scrolls and she's not Nick Fury. And this is Nick Fury's show with the scrolls being a big part of the plot. Um, so when she died and we kind of quickly moved on from it, it wasn't that big of a deal. And they went on to have a funeral for her, which was nice and dandy. But um, I low-key really don't like the fact that Talos died and he's one of the most important parts of the show and they didn't even give it time to breathe. Because with it being at the end of the episode, I thought for sure that they were going to do something and they were going to fake us out with his death. And they didn't. And they didn't even give us, like, sequences where people are mourning his loss. Like, that to me just kind of feels like a very missed opportunity. I understand that they're trying to, like, let people know that once they kill Talos, they hit the ball running. And now they're going to just keep going and going and going and going until we get to the climax. That's going to happen in episode six. But as of right now, it's just like... You just killed off one of the best parts of what this show has been so far. And you're not even going to give us five minutes to kind of mourn the character and confirm that he's dead. Because, yeah, he's basically confirmed to be dead. But I really don't like the fact that in the trailers, there is a scene where Gaia is over Talos's body and she's mourning him. And I really hate the fact that that was taken away because I feel like that would have been an emotional sequence. That would have been something really interesting to see. But instead, all of the characters just kind of seem like so driven to this plot and that it kind of takes away from the actual aspect of this is a story, these characters are made up, and it, I don't know, it just to me it feels like they're doing what the plot needs them to do and not what an actual person would do in their said situation. And it's really, really annoying me. Um, I think Scroll Rhodey is still a very interesting character, and um, I think that everything that's going on with the president is really weird to me because, like, him being shoehorned into this show, it's starting to feel more like he was sho shoehorned into the show and not that he was just supposed to be in the show from the beginning because every single time we've seen him, it's just been like a quick like, oh, this has nothing to do with the show, but here's something that's going on in the American government. Like, I feel like they're really sidelining the political aspects of the show and it's really bothering me because it's like, it's supposed to be a big thing that like, oh, they have the president now, what's going to happen? And now it's like, it doesn't feel like anything is going to happen with that. Um, another thing that I don't like is with how quickly the show is going, coming and going. Um, any of the fun tie-ins that I was hoping would happen in the show, I'm pretty sure I could 100% rule them out. Um, I really wanted Clark Gregg to show up in the show. I really wanted maybe another Avenger to be shown up in the show. I was really hoping we would see when Rhodey became a scroll, and that still hasn't happened. And um, I feel like there's so many loose ends that, like, if the next episode is, like, the last two where it's, like, 28 to 32 minutes long it's not going to have enough time for us to get everything that's going to happen in it. I'm really worried that it's going to be like WandaVision where like the first 15 minutes start off immediately with action and then the rest of it's just kind of resolution because I feel like for this last episode, it needs to be an hour long event and I'm really worried that it's going to be way shorter than that and it's not going to give us enough time to tie up all the loose ends. Um, it's not going to expl ever explain to us um, where the actual Everett Ross is. It's not going to explain to us where the actual roadie is. It's not going to bring back the actual roadie and uh, us figure out, you know, when 
scroll roadie took over regular roadie like i don't know i feel like there's so many plot holes right now and it's really really bothering me but that being said i i trust marvel and i trust that this next episode is going to be really good but i hope you guys can see where my concerns are with the last couple of episodes being really short and they now have a bunch of things that they need to answer in this last episode I don't know. I do think that the plotline with the Harvest is very interesting. The fact that they um, had some Super Trolls go into the Battle of Earth and get DNA samples from all the Avengers. I think that was really fascinating. And uh, I like the way that they tied that in. And something else I like about that is a lot of times they'll introduce something like with a code name like the Harvest and they won't explain to us what it is until the next episode. So we're stuck having to guess what it is. I like that they actually told us what it was this time. Um, but yeah. So uh, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and I will hopefully see you guys in the next one. I love and appreciate you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out. Bow. Bow. Bow.